Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, we talked about central tendency and asymmetry. In this video, we'll learn about variability. If you like this video or my other video, please like, comment and subscribe my channel. And stay tuned, we'll definitely work on different technologies. Thank you. Let's move on to the slides. Now we'll learn about variability. In variability, we learn about variance and standard deviation. These two measure the distribution of a set of data points around its mean value. And for variance and standard deviation, for population data or sample data, there are different formulas. So why is it so? When we are calculating for population data, we are 100% sure about the measures because we have the complete data set. When we are considering sample data, there may be five sample data set we are considering and for those five data set, there could be five different measures. So due to this reason, there are different formulas because there are five sample data, five different set of measures. And here is we are 100% sure because we have the population data. For population variance, this is the formula. For sample variance, this is the formula. Okay. So variance denoted as like this. And this is a capital N. This is a whole data set number. And this is a data point minus the mean okay and for sample variance we have the similar thing but here n minus 1 here one data from the sample data set should be less okay now here we are obtaining the result based on the difference of data point value from mean of the data set so data point is close to mean that means lower result now, if I consider this point as a mean, so data point is close to mean. That means lower result because the distance will be less. Now, but if it is far from the mean, then the higher result because distance will be high and we are squaring the data. So, reason for squaring the difference, it is considering, it is not considering the negative values. So reason for squaring the difference is not considering negative values as we taking the distance between one point to another point. So one point to another point, the distance cannot be negative. So that's why we are considering square of this data. Okay. Let us understand variance with some example. I have one population data set. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. First, I have calculated the mean, then population variance, then sample variance for this record. Okay. One point I want to note here, all this population variance, this calculation I have done in Microsoft Excel. You can easily work on that area. Now, I have another data set, which is 10, 20. It's a, you can observe here 20 is two times. 50 is 3 times. So it's a longer data set. So if I calculate here, I can find out mean is 33, almost near to 30, but the population variance is different, 2 to 3. So here is our analysis. We have calculated population variance and sample variance of this data set 1. Now in data set 2, we have similar data, but it has 220, 220 and 350 okay so due to this reason population variance has changed now if we consider sample variance of data set 1 it is observed the value is in high range or optimized format now if i take the sample data if i can now if i consider sample variance we can observe it's 250 where when the data set has been changed we are getting 2 to 3, that means it's almost near to the higher range or optimized format. Okay, let us move to the next slide. Standard deviation. What is standard deviation? As variance is a square, so it is a large value. So due to this reason, standard deviation is coming to the picture using the square root function. Standard deviation is very easy to calculate because we have already calculated variance and we just need to do square root of that variance. 
Now we will understand what is coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is a standard deviation divided by mean. When we are comparing standard deviation of two or more data sets, those are meaningless. Okay? I have two data sets and I am comparing the standard deviation that is not meaningless. That is meaningless. But comparing coefficient of variation is meaningful. That's why we are considering coefficient of variation. Let us understand this with some example. I have one column, column A, I have some data, column B, I have another set of data. Now I am calculating mean for column A, then calculated mean for column B. Now I have sample weights, it's like 4 point something and column B, triple 4. Now standard deviation where I am calculating, I am getting 2 point something and here is column B, 21. So if you observe, if I compare the standard deviation between column A and column B, it's completely meaningless because the here the data is in 2 and here is a 21. It's a different scale. So sample coefficient of variance is like this. Okay. So it is, you can observe, it's almost near to that same. In this above example, there is a large difference between standard deviation values. But there is very small difference for coefficient variation, which we can observe already. So due to this reason, coefficient of variation is useful measure for checking variability. Okay. Now we'll move on. Now we are in the Python code section. Okay. I have the same data set which I have created earlier. It's a df underscore um. So you can find out um is a all annual income values. Okay. Let us run the variance formula. I'm getting the variance like this. Now I'm calculating standard deviation. Now I am calculating coefficient of variation. Okay. So standard deviation divided by mean, my coefficient variation is 1.92. Okay. Now we are moving back to the slide. So up to this, we have covered all univariate measures. Now it's time to explore measures which are related to two variables. Okay. Let us understand what is covariance. Covariance is a measure of the joint variability of two variables. A positive covariance means that the two variables move together. A covariance of zero means that the two variables are independent. A negative covariance means that the two variables move in opposite direction. So covariance can take on values from minus infinity to plus infinity. So this is a problem because we have, if we have the infinite data, how will you calculate? So it is very hard to calculate such number. So this is my covariance formula. In this formula, let us understand this xi is the data point minus the mean value of the data set. Here another variable I have y, it's a y data point minus mean of that y data set. For sample and for population, we have different formula. Let us understand the example. I have column A data and column B data. Now I am calculating this formula first. I am getting all the data. Now I am getting the summation of this data. And before that, I have already calculated mean value for this column A and column B. So what is the sample size? I have sample size 5. What is the sample covariance then? Like this. So I have calculated all this formula in Microsoft Excel. Here we can observe covariance has been calculated on different scale value because it is in the range between, uh, you can observe 650 to 1300 and here is the range is something different. Okay. Due to this reason, correlation measure has been introduce because we have covariance value is like this. So let us go ahead to understand what is correlation. What is the definition? Correlation is a measure of the joint variability of two variables. 
unlike covariance it takes on values between minus 1 and plus 1 so it is very easy to interpret the result a correlation of one is known as perfect positive correlation which means that one variable is perfectly explained by the other a correlation of zero means that the variables are independent a correlation of minus 1 is known as perfect negative correlation which means that one variable is explaining the other one perfectly but they move in opposite direction correlation formula is simple we are getting the covariance value and divided by the standard deviation of the variable 1 multiply standard deviation of variable 2 and for sample data and population data we have different formula let us understand correlation with some example i am considering the same data set earlier i have calculated mean value now i am calculating standard deviation for this column a and column b now i multiply this two standard deviation here here already i have sample covariance already i have calculated now the correlation is 0.8932 from this correlation value we can conclude the value is within minus 1 and plus 1 so we can interpret this result better in comparison with covariance now we are in python code okay first i am creating one data frame and first i have calculated the mean value okay so now we are in python code first i am creating one data frame for this then i am create calculating mean value for this data frame now we are printing the covariance so in python it's a simple function cov co now i'm trying to plot some scatter plot using this data point and finally i'm displaying correlation so we can observe correlation the value is within minus 1 to plus 1 whereas covariance value is like this okay so we have completed this video and completed descriptive statistics so in this course what we learned variance standard deviation coefficient of variation covariance correlation hi friends so today we covered variability if you like this video please like comment and subscribe my channel we'll definitely work on other technologies like tableau power bi google data studio r python etc stay tuned keep learning happy learning enjoy learning